city. You might know it better as Saigon. The war in Vietnam ended 45 years ago, but the ghosts of war still haunt Saigon. Now the North's wartime propaganda posters are on sale in Saigon shops. In this cafe, time seems to have stood still since the day the Americans left in 1975. They have a lot of cute little dogs here. Well, I don't know how cute they are. They go upstairs. It's an upstairs part as well. Oh, look at the old photographs. I don't know if it's American or Vietnamese uh, army stuff. Gas masks, water bottles. I feel like I'm going back to the 1970s. Old typewriter, old TV, old radio. Amazing this place. Oh, look at those shells. Yeah, time seems to have frozen here. And all the Americans came out and went home. I don't know how old the building is, but it could well be a surviving building from 1975. Looks like it is, it looks pretty old. But just a few meters away from this cafe and its cozy 1970s nostalgia, there's a museum where the cruel realities of war come back to life. It's not an easy place to visit. This is the War Remnants Museum. The Americans had to leave Saigon in a hurry and the gardens are full of their captured planes. We've seen them in so many films, helicopters are almost a symbol of the Americans at war in Vietnam. America had about 370 of these tanks in Vietnam in 1969. It might be biased towards the North who won, and why wouldn't it be? But the museum doesn't flinch from showing what actually happened in the war. This is a tiger cage. As a punishment, prisoners were sometimes kept in here. Covered in barbed wire, they could only stoop, not even sit up straight. There are kids everywhere, but this place is definitely not for children. The museum also shows how many people in the rest of the world were protesting against the war. After the war, special teams had to search for the hundreds of thousands of unexploded bombs. This is white phosphorus. A technician warns people to keep clear. But the worst is yet to come. Upstairs there's a room dedicated to the effects of what they called Agent Orange. 
It was euphemistically called a defoliant. Millions of litres of this stuff was sprayed over a vast area. It destroyed crops, forests, wildlife, sometimes permanently. But it wasn't just what it did to the crops. It seems like the Vietnamese war was being used by the generals as a, some kind of huge experiment to try out new weapons of war. Perhaps they thought it was so far away nobody would notice. The American soldiers who came into contact with Agent Orange were told it was harmless to people. It just destroys leaves. Nothing could have been further from the truth. It caused massive health problems, birth defects and cancers, even amongst those Americans who'd handled it. It's got some horrific uh, pictures of deformities from children affected by Agent Orange. I haven't been able to film all of it because it's just too horrific to film. It seems those hardest hit were children. I feel so sorry for these ordinary Americans and other nationalities, often sent here against their will, caught up in this hell on earth, this pointless war, and slowly realising as the war went on that it was all wrong and that they were on the losing side. Most war veterans return home as heroes. These soldiers came back as outcasts. And then there's one eerie last room. Every picture here was taken by photographers who died in the war. Photographers who died. They gave their lives trying to show the rest of the world exactly what was going on in Vietnam. They weren't going to cover this one up and it changed the way generals would fight wars forever. <laughs>